suspension, you kind of understand. Yeah, that's, that's not my only concern. I mean, if it's a little treetop and the distance, then I don't have a problem with it. I just don't want to be in a tainer down a cabin in sports lane in the yard. <laughs> 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 well, that's my only concern. I mean, as long as it's going to be an eyesore, I'm through with it. I have no problem with making no money. Well, we appreciate you coming out. This is an internally lit sign, correct? Yes. So there's no spotlights on it. So you'll probably see it, but it won't be like a glare, I would think. A huge hardship. It's only 19 feet wide. So it's like the bigger the car. It's way up high. I guess we have to build Is there anyone else here that has any concerns regarding this sign? Mr. Martin, Mr. I have a question. Which way was sign to turn? Forward. That can make all the difference. I need you to come forward. I'm sorry. State your name and address for the record, please. I'm out of Davis, Lock Laurel Road. And I just, I understand this man's plight. And the direction of the sign turn would make all the difference in the world. If it's a four sided sign, he would mind it. If it's a two sided sign that's facing north and south, he wouldn't see it. Or if it's facing east and west, you can see. So that would be the determination that y'all will look into. I'm sorry. But that's something to think about, okay? Thank you. Maybe this young man can tell you which way it's going to turn. Okay? I, unfortunately, I imagine it's probably going to be facing the interstate, which puts the backside directly towards his house. Actually, I'm thinking north and south, actually. Right. Would it? Okay. Okay. That's not his determined class, though. Thank you. Thank you. The board have any questions for the applicant or staff? If no, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that the variance be granted based on the conditions outlined by staff. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, see you by raising your hand. Any opposed? I'm showing y'all what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moses. Tell, tell your client that we welcome him to follow us. Okay, the next case is APP 2012 06 <coughs> for Brooks and Almaden, Gander Mountain. Yes, sir. Um, this is the next item on your agenda. It is very similar. It's the same two code sections within the sign regulation chapter of the LDR. Um, but they're seeking variance from. This is a property that is not too far away. It's the Gander Mountain site, which is currently under construction. It is at 278 Norman Drive. It's directly right behind the Cheddar's restaurant between the Walmart and the Hampton Inn. Um, you should see it on the map. It's still Highway commercial zoning, very much a commercial area. Um, the site plan, there we go. Site plan? Site plan. Area, excuse me, I'm sorry. And there you can see the Walmart store, the Hampton Inn, the Rainwater Conference Center, Cheddar's, this is while well, it was still under construction, this was taken a couple of years ago. Um, and just for reference, the Academy store is right up here. This is River Street and Warren. Um, this property is not quite as big as the last one. Um, it's about six and a half acres that they're building on behind Cheddar's. And referring to last month's package, has a little bit more of the details. You've seen that same comparison chart on the front page. Um, the little difference here is that Gander Mountain is not quite as big as the Academy Sports Building, but it does sit a lot further back off the road, 675 feet from the front wall to Norman Drive. Um, that's a little bit further behind um, off of the road than even the Walmart next door. Um, the same comparables are there, Sam's Club, um, up the street, of course, where wall signage complies. The Walmart next door, um, I guess it's the closest comparison. They were granted a variance back in 2004 for increased wall signage. Um, well, the Walmart has 655 feet of building facades, so they're a very large wall, and so they got some relief. 
about 458 square foot of, of signage that they have. Um, but with Walmart's case, it is spread out over several signs. Uh, the main signs are not all that big. And then by comparison to the Walmart on the other side of town, similar size store, not as far back off the road, that they have a lot less wall signage. Interesting to note too, um, about two years ago, both Walmarts and Sands went through and redid all of their signage, replaced all the sign panels. No variances were required or requested at that time. So they just continued to comply with the code or the variance that was granted eight years ago. And here again, Mr. Chairman, this is two different types of requests. I have recommendations a little bit different on the two of them. I would recommend that we would consider them one at a time. Okay. Um, the wall signage, last month, this is looking at this month's addendum packet. We were originally requesting almost 500 square feet of wall signage, and that was spread over three signs. It was the main sign, which is the Gander Mountain, and then what we call the Goose logo, which is the corporate logo above it, and then off to the side, a separate sign for Gun World, which I think is one of the brands that they carry. Um, and you see the comparisons where they've gone from nearly 500 down to, down to 337. The main sign itself, um, is now at 199 square feet, uh, which is below the code requirement if we were to take that sign by itself. Um, if you add in the Goose logo, then they're up around 262, 263 square feet, uh, which even if that was all that they were doing on the main facade, we could review it administratively. And given the great distance on the whole drive, I think um, staff would approve that. Um, the Gun World is what's putting it over the top. Kind of like Academy, it was their logo signs. In this case, it's a separate sign that they are proposing to have. Um, on the rear, they're, remember that they're allowed up to a maximum of 250 square feet per facade. They were originally proposing 247 on the rear wall, which needed no variance that complied with code. This is the wall facing the interstate. Um, and they're proposing to reduce that even a little bit more to help compensate, I think, for some of the extra signage on the front wall. So the total signage with both have gone from 744 down to 576. Um, whereas normally they would be allowed 500 as a matter of code. So they're very close to code requirements. And just like we had stated in the previous request, we're very reluctant um, to recommend approval of any sign variances when there's no obvious hardship. In their case, they have a little bit stronger argument for wall signage relief, but I think even Academy um, is a similar size building, but they are way off of Norman Drive. They're more than 600 feet, which is unlike some of the other big box retails that are along Norman Drive. So they have a little bit different situation there. Um, so with the wall signage, we're recommending approval with the two conditions. The first one being wall signs for the front facade shall be approved with increased signage area based on the revised signage schematic drawings, which are there in your packet. Um, with maximum area allocations as follows. First is the main wall sign of the Goose logo, 264 square feet. Gun rolled and other wall signs together requiring a permit at 75 square feet. These are rounded up from the numbers that they've given us. And number two, wall signs for the rear facade shall be limited to a maximum total of 239 square feet. Wall signs for all other walls requiring a permit shall be incidental for purposes of labeling, loading docks, and doorways, and shall be limited to no more than 25 square feet cumulative on each wall. Same thing that we recommended with the cabin. Any questions on this one so far? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I'm driving down Norman Drive, and I'm looking for the Gander Mountain. Is it going to be a mystery where it is? I can be a mystery where it is. And I think most of the us already knows where it is. Word travels fast in our town. Um, but even a, if I'm visiting from out of town, come on the interstate, and I know there's a Gander Mountain, and it says on Norman Drive, and I drive down the road, I'm going to be able to find it, right? I would hope I so. I mean, when I drove down Norman Drive, I could tell where it was going to be. You know, somebody from out of town, they're going to be able to find where it is, right? They should. Uh, sure. I'm just going to know what Gander Mountain is. about people's intelligence. Well, is it going to be tricky because it's behind Cheddar's? Well, it's all. Uh, there's the line is there's another big line in front of them. Um, there's Cheddar's, which the blocks part of their vision. And then there's a vacant parcel here that has yet to be built upon. So we don't know what is going to be there. So there's a fairly narrow view shed either through the main entrance or diagonally across the Walmart parking lot. Um, I, I just would like to know what Gander Mountain is. What is that? It is another sporting goods store. Um, 
they are different specialties. I mean, later on his question why we're having two of these national retail chains which aren't in this area yet, and so therefore as locals don't know a whole lot about them, except for maybe we travel. Um, but they are not quite the same uh, variety of products. Scanner Mountain is more of the outdoors, hunting and fishing. Um, there's a representative is here, I'm sure he'll be glad to tell you all about them. Academy Sports deals more with athletics. It's going to be a little bit different. And apparently they don't mind being at a quarter mile of each other. Hi, Mike Pacino, Burke Samantha, um, as you mentioned, the Andermount representative. Um, I don't have a lot new to add, just a little bit more. As um, Matt mentioned, Andermount is predominantly focused on outdoors activities, hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, that type of thing. One of the things they're doing nationally is rebranding or co-branding some of their stores with this gun world concept, and that is because they are actually the nation's largest retailer of firearms is a large portion of their business. Um, one of the reasons they chose to go with a larger, their larger prototype footprint here in Valdosta is because of the strong hunting factor. And uh, so they will have an extended um, <clears throat> gun selection and everything that goes along with guns, you know, archery targets and all of that sort of stuff. So that's the reason for the additional little gun world sign. Um, other than that, we do sit just a heck of a long ways uh, in, from a retail perspective from our front access road of Norman Drive. Um, as Matt mentioned, we're 670 feet back. The Walmart in that picture is at about 450 as a matter of perspective. And then other than that, if there's any questions. Is there anyone here today who'd like to speak in opposition of this request? No. Any contact with your office? No, sir, no contact. <coughs> Board, have any discussion? Second variant request, just like Academy Sports, has to do with highlights identification sign. Um, and just like Academy Sports, there's no issue with the height or the area of the sign, it is simply the location. But theirs is a little different. They are actually proposing to put theirs in the rear yard setback area, uh, which is along by 75. The problem is there's a spacing requirement um, for the minimum spacing is 500 feet from any other highlights identification sign. And in their case, this is on 75, this is Norman Drive out here, so this is south. Um, there is an existing sign for Hampton Inn here, and 500 feet away is an existing sign for Walmart. Okay, and they are right in between. They're requesting to put theirs approximately in the middle, and therefore approximately 250 feet from either high-rise sign instead of the required 500. Um, just like we had talked about before, the purpose of the high rise identification sign regs is to get them off of the local street and up where uh, you can't see them. Uh, but also 500 feet apart, just I think to help protect the city skyline and clutter. Um, I met with the applicants out on the site on Friday. Uh, we did a test where they raised, actually it was two sheets of plywood that were painted red and stuck together, lifted up on a crane. And we looked at some different locations within the site and different heights, and then drove up and down the interstate and spent a little bit of time looking at it. Um, what that sort of, I think, proved to both of us is that it needs to be at least 120 feet in the air to be effective, which is the same height as the Hampton Inn sign. Um, but also what we ran into 
is the sign at these different heights in different locations begins to either be blocked by these two other signs, the Hampton or the Walmart, or is blocking them. Um, and I think to the applicant's credit, we were really looking for a place so it would not block their neighbors. Um, but it was a little hard to find a good location. And Tracy will go back to that. This is a schematic that was given to us by the applicant where they took the existing signs and drew 500 foot radius circles around each of them to kind of see how much of their properties included in that 500. One of the things I was thinking about was this area right in here. Um, Cheddar's, because of where they're located, if they wanted to, they could do a high rise sign in their rear yard right back here as a matter of right. Meets all the code requirements as long as it's up high enough too big. And I thought, well, they have, they've been there a year and a half, have not done that yet. Perhaps Gander could put one in the same general area or somewhere else nearby. And maybe not be exactly 500 feet or more from the signs, but close. And so we explored that possibility. Um, you know, one of the test sites was in this general area. We looked at it back on Friday. It's obviously not quite as effective as along the interstate. There's different like, pros and cons. Mr. Messina has got some opinions about that. Um, but staff is of the opinion this area is still plausible, perhaps not as advantageous as the interstate, but we would much rather see a minor variance to the 500 foot spacing requirement back here than we would the 50% variance up along the interstate. Um, also, back here, you don't have quite the same issue of blocking neighboring zones or being blocked by them as long as you're high enough. Now some of the issues here, of course you're further from the interstate, so you have to look, look to the left or the right, um, but not too much of an angle. Um, but you've got to be high enough to be above the trees, there's a large line of oak here, and then a four-story hotel, which at 100 plus feet, you're definitely up above the hotel. Um, but you want to be up high enough so you're going to be seen from the other sides. So in this case, staff could not find any justification for this magnitude of the variance here. 50% of the code requirement. Um, so we're recommending denial of this one. So what is the intent of the sign regulation as it regards high-rise identification? High-rise identification signs first and foremost get a separator from the local street system. So it's not part of the signage going down a local street. Yeah, like that drive. Satisfy, satisfy that. But the 500 foot radius is to get them far enough apart from each other one so you don't have the issue of them blocking you know, view of each other um, and you don't pollute your skyline with lots of tall signs up there. What pollutes it more? Putting them, sprinkling them evenly across the landscape and putting them all in one place? Uh, depends if you're looking at the one place or if you're looking at the broad area. But that's an interesting question. <laughs> The 500 foot number, um, I mean, when this was written 20 years ago, uh, came from the spacing between the billboards along the interstate. There's a, a visual spacing that's required by George DMT. I think that's where the 500 foot number came from, as opposed to 400 or 300 or 600. That's where the 500 was from. And keep in mind, this is just along what we call the I 75 corridor, which is every property within 1,500 feet of the interstate. It's allowed to have these. These are extra signage, it's not get counted in the grand total for freestanding signage, it's over and above any other signage that you're allowed to have for the property. Oh, vacant adjacent land. Yeah. What else do we have there? There's, there's a good this, see down well, on this side of Norman Drive, this I think is the last one. Um, just to give you some of the history of it too, not all of these high rise signs along here went up at the same time. Um, the conference center was built first. They've got one down here. Hampton Inn was the next significant one. Um, theirs is in their back corner, which is where they had to go because that's the rear yard of their property, and it was along the interstate, and it met the spacing department from the conference center. Um, next in line was Sam's. Remember, it was built next. And so their sign is up here, and then along came Walmart. And Walmart had a choice pretty much along seven two-thirds of their property to place their sign. And as you can see, the back of their building is pretty tight along the interstate. And I really think they just chose to go down here in the corner one because it meant the 500 foot spacing from Hampton Inn and it wouldn't block their truck driveway. 
just the convenient location. Um, and this property itself is not quite 500 feet wide, it's 470 feet or something like that. Um, so it would not have been eligible under the 500 foot spacing anyway. As far as signs right along the highway, they'd have to be further back off to get 500 feet away from Hampton and so So I think that's why Walmart went here with their sign. But they could have gone up here, but I think in a with their own sign, a little closer to the north, it would have been within 500 feet of the sand sign, and therefore a problem with that one. Uh, but as far as I 75 frontage parcels, this is the last one in this area between the two main exits. Do you have anything to add? Yes, please. Uh, I don't believe this is in your packet. Um, we have absolutely no doubt that this is exactly what the city was trying to prevent when they enacted this rule. However, as it's currently written with the 500 foot separation requirement, it makes no provision for being a, basically, if you're first in, good for you. If you're next, sorry. You There's a squeezed out. Well, if you could, Tracy, could you please go back to the one with the two circles? Granted, Cheddar's has not placed a rear yard sign along the rear of their property. If we place one, not only would they not be able to have a high rise sign, the vacant property next to them would not be able to have uh, to the south of them would be able to have one. Neither would the property tiny little out parcel that sits along Norman Drive. So if we were to think that that was a good idea, which we don't for other reasons, we would be effectively preventing three future developments from the ability to have an IRI sign. The 500 foot spacing that um, was referenced from the Georgia DOT billboard code. These are not billboards. <laughs> They're nothing like a billboard. Their primary purpose is to draw attention to the business that's near the interstate. That's why all of the major hotels.